Welcome to the first episode of season 14. This episode will be a little different as it will not really talk about trust, at least not directly. As a professional speaker, the business is pretty much, well, me, which is sometimes scary. You may be in the same position. The business is you. And there are never enough hours in the day to do everything. And as a one-person business, you really do have to do everything. You know, sometimes I teach entrepreneurs to entrepreneurship to young kids, even in elementary school, and I tell them that one of the traits of a successful entrepreneur is that he or she are not afraid to get their hands dirty, sometimes literally. But as many of my professional speaking colleagues tell me, do what you can do, what only you can do, and pay someone else to do the rest. Well, the truth is is that this is not really a black or white, and and there are a lot of nuances to this. You know, less than a week ago, we had the first presidential debate in 2024, uh, and I'm not going to say much about that. I'm not going to say anything about it, but I'll give you a quote from one of the presidential debates in my most favorite TV show, The West Wing. This is where the president says, every once in a while, every once in a while, there is a day with an absolute right and an absolute wrong, but those days almost always include body counts. Other than that, there aren't very many nuanced moments in leading a country that's way too big for 10 words. Well, there aren't any many new unnuanced things even in business. Everything is nuanced. It can just be make it yourself or pay someone to do it. In this episode, I will share my thoughts about how you can make those decisions. And and even though I will not talk about trust, although I'll probably use the word at least once, I hope that this will help you in making decisions. So without further ado, let's dive into the make versus buy debate right after this. Welcome to The Trust Show. I'm Yoram Solomon, your host, the author of the Book of Trust and facilitator of the Trust Habits Workshop. My mission is simple. I want to help you form habits that build your trustworthiness because the answer to this question will have the biggest impact on your personal and professional success or failure. Can I trust you? In this episode, I'm going to break it into three parts. The first part, I'll talk about what are the functions of the business. In the second part, I'll talk about what are the alternatives for those functions. And in the third part, I'll talk about how do you make or how should you make a decision on which alternative to choose for which function. So let's start with the functions. So first of all, keep in mind that there are different things for different types of businesses. I will cover here how I broke down my business, the professional speaking business. What I do is I create content, I write, uh, I write books, I'm currently writing book number 20, I write articles, I record podcasts, I do videos, and uh, obviously I deliver keynotes with presentations. So I, I do all those things, I'm going to break it even further. So the first thing is I had to break down what are the functions of my business? Without doing that, you can't make those decisions because you can't make a general decision. I, lies, I, I hire someone to do everything. So what are the functions of my business? Uh, first, there's content development. This is developing the actual content. I can't tell you how many times I see people going to ChatGPT or recommending that you go to ChatGPT to develop your content. Let me just remind you, that's not your content. If you're using ChatGPT to go and scour the net to find content, to create content for you, it's not your content, okay? So there's content development. And and I strongly believe that the content development should be done by you if you are the expert. Uh, Unless all you do is you read other people's stuff when, when you deliver a keynote. Okay, I'm passionate about this, you can tell. The next is content delivery. So this would be, on one hand, uh, this would be the keynotes or the workshops, the live events. Uh, It could be the Zoom events or or the uh, online events. It could be the um, 
uh, even videos that you create. So that's the delivery of the content. And other parties research. Again, this goes into uh, how deep of content uh, do you have, but uh, you can do the research or have someone else do the research. So find the, the baseline upon which you will develop uh, your own content. And, and I think that it's important to do research rather than I'm just going to start writing content because of two things. First of all, you want to know what other people have said before, what was known before. And the second thing is it's going to give you ideas. And the third thing for me is it allowed me to realize how what I do or my perspective is different on, in my case, trust. Another one, a uh, I'm not going to say controversial, but it typically uh, does spur a conversation, is making sales calls, calling people who don't necessarily know you or even people who do know you to try and sell your business or your product or your service. The next one is preparing the presentations themselves. You know, there's uh, your content. Your content has to be delivered in a presentation format often, not always. But when it needs to be delivered in a presentation format, then uh, who does that? You know, who formats it into nice looking slides? Um, you know, even if uh, your, your business is dancing, then somebody needs to do the choreography, right? Should you do your own choreography? Should you have someone else? So that's just a sideline example. Uh, writing, writing itself. Uh, should you do it? Should you have another tool or someone do the writing? How about editing? Now, I'll tell you that personally, I would always like to have an external editor. As many tools as I am using, that's just the first layer of editing and my, my own first layer of editing. But it helps me at least to have a second set of eyes look at it. And it's not, not necessarily a matter of am I good at it or bad at it as it is another set of eyes. Publishing, the process of publishing itself. Uh, those of you who know me, if you know me, then you know that I publish my own books. I didn't start that way. I started by hiring companies and people to do the publishing for me until I realized that, uh, you know, I... I was a control, I still am a control freak and I like things to be done in a certain way. So um, publishing, the formatting. So you wrote the text. Now, how about formatting it into uh, a book? Uh, how about creating the graphics, the, the artwork? Videography, taking videos. So I personally have a video studio uh, upstairs in my, my own house. Uh, with a green screen and uh, a uh, semi-pro, I'll call it, uh, video camera, lighting and everything. I did a lot of studying to know how to do the videography. And later, I'll, I'll say why I chose to do videography myself, but there are other alternatives for it. Photography, kind of same thing. So uh, do you take your own photos? Well, it's kind of hard uh, unless you do selfies. Uh, but uh, again, you know, how do you do photography? Or if you need photos of other things other than yourself. Recording podcasts. Uh, how do you do the recording? So I do my own recording. I have my own little studio in my office and uh, I use uh, Adobe Audition to record. I actually record directly into it and, and then I do the editing and I, I publish everything myself. But again, I'm, I'm not talking about the editing right now. It's just the recording process itself. Editing applies to video, photo, podcast, uh, audio, anything. Uh, the editing itself, is this something that you know how to do? Or the, the, uh, Forget about you know right now, but, but uh, should you do or, or have someone else do it? Digital marketing or marketing in general. Uh, things like uh, search engine optimization, SEO, uh, mailing list and uh, other things. Uh, that's another part of the business. Web design. I have websites, not just one. Uh, so who's designing the websites? Should I design or have someone else? Online courses. And online courses, you know, typically you would be the person that is in the video, although there are alternatives. You can hire someone. Uh, today there are artificial intelligence. I'm going to call them deep fake tools that uh, would allow you to just choose an avatar and have them deliver the course, um, which is actually quite amazing. I, I, I'm trying to remember, Syntasia is the name of uh, one of the companies, at least, that does that, that comes to mind, and, and they do an amazing 
uh, amazing job. All you have to do is really just write the text and then an avatar that really, really looks real does it for you. So how do you do online courses? Um, you know, I, I'm pretty sure that if I think deeper, I, I'm going to find other components, even in my business, the business of public speaking. Uh, but the question is, what are the functions of your business? So the first step in making the decisions of make versus buy is to break it down. Break your business down into what are the different components, significant enough components uh, that for which you are going to make probably different decisions. So again, my business is my business. Other speakers look at it differently. Other speakers may not have all the components that I read here. Other speakers have more components than I do, and that's fine. Uh, break down the essential, the important parts uh, of your business. List them all before we move to step two. Once you broke down all the components of your business, the second uh, part is to figure out what the alternatives are. So I I'm going to list seven alternatives here. Uh, I can't think of anything else, but I'm sure that if you think deeper, you may think of somebody of something else, another alternative. And that alternative should apply to every one component of your business, and sh it should apply differently. So one alternative is do it yourself. That, that's pretty straightforward. This is when we say make versus buy. This is the make. You make it. You do it yourself. Second alternative is to hire someone and tell them exactly what to do. So this is where you hire a pair of hands, essentially, which reminds me of something that Henry Ford once said. He said, why is it that every time uh, I uh, ask for a pair of hands, it comes with the brain attached. So he didn't like the brain attached. Sometimes you wouldn't want the brain attached. So I just need a pair of hands. I need somebody to go through something, uh, typically when it's very, very repetitive. And um, you're going to tell them exactly what to do, and that's exactly what they're going to do. Uh, this is this does not depend on their skills. This This is a pretty low bar. The third option is to hire someone who knows how to do it and probably knows how to do it better than you do. So let's talk about video editing, for example. If you're not very skilled and very creative in video editing, then somebody who has worked and studied and have done a lot of projects in video editing is actually someone who knows how to do it better than you. And I'm sure that, that there are other people who know how to do it better than me, even though I edit my own videos. I, I'll tell you in the next section what were my criteria, uh, but but those are the uh, uh, that's that that was my choice. So I'm doing it. Uh, and yes, I know that there are other people who can do it better than me, no doubt. Number four is to hire a company that does that on a regular basis. Typically, when it involves capital, like take a video studio, not everybody builds a video studio in their home, and my video studio here is nowhere near some of the other video studios that I saw held by companies. Sometimes it's the quality of the ca it's the, it, the quality of the cameras, it's the tools that they have, the the setup, the the logistics, and everything. And there's another, even, even if none of those are involved, sometimes it's the reputation of this company. And even though you may not know who is the specific person who does that, you know that they will make sure that it gets done right. And if they have to switch to somebody else, they will do it not less good as the first person did that. So um, that's option number four. You hire a company that does that, and they're going to use their own resources. Number five is you license it. And in some cases, uh, licensing works, for example, in uh, photos. So you can actually, if, if you needed, like, I'll give you an example, my 20th book, uh, uh, The Trust Premium. On the cover, I decided to put a handshake, two people shaking hands. Well, it's a picture. I can take this picture. The question is, will I take this picture as good as um, somebody else? 
Well, there are artists that, that already took those pictures. So I don't even need to hire somebody to take the picture because the picture is available. And I ended up licensing a picture from one of the databases, the picture databases, a licensable databases. So I paid for it. I licensed it. And, uh, you know, uh, it cost me $15 and uh, it was uh, a lot cheaper than hiring a photographer to take a handshake. And, uh, you know, then I will have to see if I like it or not. Whereas right now, I know exactly what I'm getting because I can see it. Number six is to partner with someone. So that's a little different. And that's where you decide that you will never do this part of the business. It's an important part of the business. And maybe what you should do is not, not split the business, but kind of this is going to be my part of the business and this is going to be your part of the business and you partner with somebody that you actually bring into the business they are now part owners of your business it's now the business is now the two of you i thought about this some time ago when i thought about extending my trust habits framework to coaching and uh, i started discussions with someone who might actually be my partner in building this into a coaching business. So she was a coach. She, she is a coach and a very good one. And uh, whether she would be willing and able to build a coaching practice into our business. So I don't like doing coaching. I don't like doing consulting, but there is a lot of value in taking my work and turning it into a coaching practice or a consulting practice. And in this case, if I would have gone through with it, and I may still in the future partner with someone who will do it further, who will take this part of the business. And the seventh one, I guess you didn't see this one coming. Just don't do it. Maybe this function does not need to happen. Maybe it's not that important to your business. Maybe it's just either paying somebody to do it or spending the, your time to do it yourself is not worth it. Then just don't do it. So seven options. Do it yourself. Hire someone. Tell them exactly what to do. Hire someone who knows how to do it better than you. Hire a company that does that. And by the way, sometimes the, the uh, function actually requires multiple steps and there is no one single person that can do everything. And when you hire a company, that's when the um, uh, they can have one person do one part, another person do another part, and you benefit from uh, the experience of multiple people, uh, as opposed to you take it from one person, you hand it over to the second one, to the third one. You don't need to manage it. The, four, the uh, fifth one is to license it. The sixth one is to partner with someone, give them part of the business that uh, has those functions in it, um, and uh, they become your partner in your business. And the seventh one is don't do it. So, we, and, and again, remember that different answers will be applicable to different functions. In some functions, you may decide that uh, it's better that I do it myself. Uh, and in others, you may want to use any of the, those seven, including the don't do it, including the partner. Partner should be something that's really important to your business. Uh, partner with someone. Could be marketing and sales, by the way. You may partner with somebody who's going to be responsible for marketing and sales. So there, there's a lot. Um, but but different and different functions will have different answers. With that, I'm going to switch to the last part, the third part, and that is what are the criteria for how you should make those decisions? Finally, how do you make the decisions? What are the criteria? So I'm going to give you a, a relatively long list of criteria, but those are the type of things that you need to consider. So first of all, the timing. How soon do you need it? What's the turnaround time that you need? Sometimes you may need something faster rather than you got all the time in the world to do it. Uh, for example, when I did the, the book cover design, I had a lot of time because I'm not done writing the book. So I got enough time. I could hire someone. Uh, when I do my videos, th there is I, I tell people that there is no substitute to the fact that I wake up at 7 a.m., I have an idea for a video, and by 10 a.m., that video is on YouTube. After I went upstairs, recorded it in my studio, edited it, uploaded it, 
it's up there uh, on YouTube or any other uh, format. So uh, I I like that uh, that I don't know if I would call it flexibility, but this turnaround time. Different turnaround times may be required for different functions. Consider that. Creativity. Are you creative enough? Um, I'm, I'm going to combine this with... Uh, uh, no, I'm not going to combine it. How creative are you? Some, some functions don't require creativity. Uh, some functions do. Uh, how comfortable are you doing them? How creative are you? Another one is the logistics, the space and the tools. So I'm fortunate that I have a room that I could allocate into a video studio. Uh, and I could spend the money on a good camera and good lighting and microphones and, and everything that I needed. And if you see my video studio, a lot of wires, cables. But uh, maybe the logistics are logistics that uh, you cannot afford. More and more tools are becoming available at very low prices. And so uh, maybe you can afford it. So ask yourself, what are the logistics that are required? How deep do you have to be in control? First book that I published, I had them uh, do both the formatting and the, uh, well, a lot more than just the formatting and the cover design. And I can tell you that I realized uh, through that experience that I'm a control freak. I had them change and change and change, and I wasn't happy with this. This didn't look exactly like I envisioned and so on. Uh, you have to ask yourself, how much of a control freak are you? And, you know, I'm, I'm not saying control freak as a negative necessarily thing. I mean, uh, it is what it is. I need to be in control. I need the things that come, come out of my business to look like I visualize them, like I envision them to be. You have to ask yourself on different functions. On so some of them, I don't care that much. On others, especially aesthetics, I do. Do you have the time to do it? Do you have time to do that that function? Some functions uh, are, I would say, not very smart. They don't require a lot of intelligence, but they are repetitive, and you do it over and over and over and over again. There's no creativity involved. Um, so you have to ask yourself, do, do I have the time to do them? Can you afford it? And at this point, I'm going I'm going to ask the question, can you afford it twice? This time I'm asking, can you afford the other person? Can you afford paying someone to do it? And, you know, let's face it, money is, uh, is an issue. You're building a business that uh, needs to be cash positive. And uh, if something is not important enough but costs a lot of money to make it, uh, to, to hire someone to do it, can you afford it? Can you afford it and keep your business viable? And, you know, I, I know a lot of people always uh, used to tell me, uh, uh, you can't afford not to do it. Well, is this really the case or is just it's just the saying, you know? So ask yourself, can you afford it? No doubt, you have to invest in your business, but the investment has to be smart. Next one is, do you have the skills required? I talked about creativity, now I'm talking about skills. Uh, skills in general on how to do this. Maybe do you have the experience uh, to do it? But you know what? Just as I asked, do you have the skills? You need to ask the question, do they have the skills? So the person you're about to hire, do they have those skills? Another consideration, quantity and frequency. The more frequent something is, on one hand, the more you're going to have to spend money on it if you hire someone, or the more you're going to have to spend time on it if you do it yourself. So that would be a consideration, uh, especially when something requires a high learning, a, a steep learning curve that somebody else will have, but you don't. So, for example, if I want to hire somebody to write articles on my behalf, uh, they need to know what I know. They need to know the Book of Trust on its quarter million words and all the other books that I wrote about trust before they can write the first article in my voice. Well, fortunately, ChatGPT can do some of it. Um, the next part is, and, and maybe, you know, maybe I should add an eighth uh, alternative, and that is artificial intelligence. Uh, artificial intelligence is getting better and better. And uh, the question is, uh, is this a uh, tool that artificial intelligence can do? So I'll, I'll add that to uh, the seven components. So now it's going to be eight. And eight is a favorite number of mine anyway. So... Do you have the skills? Do they have the skills? Um, 
what are the quantity and frequency requirements? Uh, is it a repetitive task? Uh, is it something that's going to take a lot of your time? Is it something that's going to take a lot of money? Quality requirements. What is the quality requirement? Will somebody else be able to do it in better quality than you? How important is it? The how important is it will go into another component I'll mention, and that's the return on investment. If something is not very important but very expensive, then you know maybe the option you're going to choose is don't do it. But you have to, to figure out how important is this to your business. And sometimes something may not appear very important, but it is important. It is a critical component. So ask yourself that. Could you do something else in that time? Is it something that, you know, if if instead of doing this, I could do something else? And that's typically the, the argument that people give me to why I should hire people to do things uh, uh, other than, you know, my main functions, which would be writing, speaking, and, and delivering. Um, could Is there something else that you can do in that time? Sometimes that time is, is a dead time. You know, if uh, the only thing that I would decide that I do is deliver my keynotes and do nothing else, everything else is outsourced, then guess what? Um, I can't do anything else if I'm not booked at that time. You know, if I'm booked one day of the week and I'm not booked the other six days or four days, however I want to work uh, of the week, then I can not really do something else at that time because there's nothing else that I can do. Here's an important question. Will you like doing it? Will it be fun? I I'll tell you one thing. It's fun for me to edit my videos. It's fun for me to uh, work on the cover of my book. It's fun. I enjoy doing it. By the way, uh, you can also do a combination. I'll, I'll talk about the combination at, at the end. Uh, combination of things. So uh, will you like doing it? Will it be fun for you? Uh, if it's not fun, well, not everything in business is going to be fun. And again, uh, are you willing to get your hands dirty? Uh, that means uh, getting your hands dirty is uh, really a... a um, Metaphor for uh, doing things that are not fun. Here's an interesting one. Will doing it will enhance your other functions. So if you do one part of it, will it make the other, the fact that you're doing it, will it make the other parts of your function better? So let's say, for example, that I would let somebody else write my books, but as a result, I will not be as as good as a keynote in as a keynote speaker and and the fact that i'm i'm doing my own writing the fact that i'm doing my own research i think helps me in my writing uh the fact that i do my own writing helps me in uh in speaking so will doing it yourself enhance other functions so there is a some additional value to it are you willing and capable of learning something new, if this is something you've never done before, and right with that, what is the learning curve? What is the learning curve to learning this thing and getting to to the minimum, well, to, to, yeah, to the minimum acceptable quality that you're willing to take? How long would it take for you to get there? How far is it from your comfort zone? You know, do you feel comfortable? I'm, I'm not talking about this being fun, I'm talking about will it be comfortable for you or is it too far? If it's outside of your comfort zone, but you're willing to go there, you want to go there, that's one thing. If it's too far out of your comfort zone and you don't feel comfortable going there, that's a different one. I told you I'm going to use the word trust. Can you trust the other person to do that and to do that right, to do that the way you need it to be done? And, you know, this is where uh, I, I'm not sure if the last episode that I recorded or a couple of episodes uh, before that at the end of uh, season 13, uh, I talked about the trust but verify. And those things are on opposite sides. If you trust someone, you don't have to verify. If you don't trust them, you have to micromanage them or manage them or verify what they do, communicate more frequently. So you have to ask yourself, is this something that I can trust them to do it and uh, not spend a lot of time? Or I can't trust them to do it. I, I can't trust them because they're not going to do it right. 
or I can't trust them enough, which means that it will require a lot of management, verification, and communication. So those are things you have to consider. Will they know what you know? You know, once again, uh, for for me to hire someone to uh, record videos uh, on my behalf, they need to know what I know. And I'm not talking about recording me speaking. I'm talking about recording themselves speaking or writing articles for me. Um, will they know what I know? So again, I'm, I'm going to go back to this new component I added as I'm thinking out loud. And this would probably be uh, the uh, proof for you that I really only write an outline for this podcast, but I flow with it. And I just had an eighth component, which is artificial intelligence. Uh, will artificial intelligence know what I know? Well, I'm using ChatGPT+, Plus, which allows me to upload my content without making it available to anybody else. And at that moment, ChatGPT or my own personal chatbot that I created under ChatGPT knows everything that I've put on paper. I upload transcripts of podcast episodes. Now it knows that. It's very quick on, on searching it. But if you're hiring a person, will they know what you know? Do they need to know what you know? I told you I'll get back to what is their return on investment. And their return on investment would be, um, you know, what is the amount of investment? Whether it's time, your own time, or the amount of money that you're paying somebody else versus how important it is to your business. So I already asked the question, how important is it? But this is where I'm asking you to put this versus the alternatives uh, and ask what's the best return on investment. I mentioned uh, during uh, going through those that, uh, that there is another option. And the other option is to actually use multiple options uh, for the same function. So again, I'll give you the example of uh, writing or, or designing a book cover. Uh, I started by having somebody design book covers for me and I was not crazy about it. I changed people and uh, still wasn't crazy about it. They didn't see what I saw in my head. And then I started doing my own cover designs. And you know what? I'm, I'm creative. I'm pretty creative. So I did a few very nice cover designs. And I do. I did a few cover designs that were really, really, really bad. And one thing that I do is I actually open it up, uh, I post it, and I ask people for their feedback, and I get their feedback. And some people are can be overly critical and overly opinionated, and that's fine, as long as at the end of the day I do get feedback and I do get how people see it. Uh, so I did that, and then I realized I need to find something in between, and I had this brilliant idea. I don't know if you're familiar with Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R-R. -R. It's actually an Israeli company uh, that connects uh, individuals. I, I don't know if I would call them artists, uh, professionals in, in different skills with buyers who buy their stock. They, they reason, uh, not their stock, their stuff. Uh, the reason uh, they call it Fiverr was that initially everything was $5. Right now, hardly anything is $5 there. But what I do now is I hire one or two or three or, or more cover designs, book cover designs. I pay each one of them to come up with alternatives. I get all the alternatives and those give me an idea and I design my own final cover design. So that's what I'm doing uh, or have done already for my 20th book, uh, the book of uh, the, uh, uh, the Trust Premium book. Uh, that's what I did with uh, the Book of Trust. I hired a couple of uh, book cover designers and they came up with uh, a few ideas. And uh, I looked at those ideas. I combined, I took the best of uh, the different ideas and I ended up with my own design. So you can do a combination. That's something to keep in mind. It's important. Once again, you will get different answers to different functions based on the criteria that I gave you here. So use the criteria that I gave you here. I wanted to add one more consideration, and it's not necessarily a consideration of uh, the make versus buy, uh, do it yourself or hire someone or something, uh, as it is uh, it, an overall consideration, a higher level consideration, and that's don't reinvent the wheel. Other people have done things that you're about to do. How have they been doing it? 
see what others have done. Follow others that uh, are kind of your role models and see how they're doing things. Not not necessarily whether they're doing it themselves or they're hiring someone to do it uh, as uh, get ideas from people. Now, be careful. Don't plagiarize other people. Don't steal content from other people. That's not what I'm saying here. What I'm saying is look at other people, look at what they're doing, how they're doing it. It will give you ideas. It will also give you the idea of, you know, if my, take a competitor, if my competitor has done this at this level, that sets the bar to how good my stuff has to be. This is not something I can do myself. I'm going to have to hire someone uh, to do it. So, um, that's kind of a, a, a side note or a higher level note. Don't reinvent the wheel. See how others in your profession have done similar things or even in other professions. Uh, get ideas. Don't plagiarize. Uh, and it help, will help you make those decisions. This is it. This is the end. Uh, again, I want you to keep in mind that uh, there are different answers to different parts of the business uh, and different people. Uh, you and I are different. And so the way I, uh, things meet or do not meet my criteria are different for me than they are for you for better or worse. The steps, um, the steps are, as I said, the first part is break this into business functions, break your business into the different functions. Um, because you're going to keep in mind that you're going to have to make different decisions for different functions. Consider the complete list of alternatives. As I started recording the podcast today, I had seven alternatives. By the time I closed it, I had eight. I added artificial intelligence. Uh, it is what it is. We're in 2024. Artificial intelligence is getting better and better. By the way, I do use artificial intelligence to help me design my, my blog cover. Uh, so I ask it to, uh, you know, and I'm going to ask it to create a cover for this, the article that comes out of this podcast episode. I'm probably going to start with something like, uh, give me a good cover, uh, graphic cover that would uh, convey the message of making the decision between making something yourself or hiring someone to do it. Maybe I'll go a little more specific and so on. But yeah, I, I will use artificial intelligence. And again, that decision is made based on the criteria that I gave you. So uh, number one, again, I, I started rambling, so I need to summarize it. Number one, break it into business functions. Break your business into the different functions. Uh, consider the complete list of alternatives. It's not just I do it myself or I hire someone. There, I gave you eight alternatives. Number three, consider the weight. Uh, consider and weigh the criteria, the different criteria that I gave you, uh, and make different decisions for different functions. So keep in mind that it's going to be different decisions for different functions. Once again, remember that what works for me may not work for you. What works for you may not work for me. What works for one business may not work work for another business. So uh, I'm sorry, it's all nuanced. You can't uh, simplify everything to a silver bullet of uh, hire someone to do things that, that are not core to your business. That's oversimplification. I don't believe in oversimplification. You'll see it through every, uh, every piece of my work. Anyway, that's it for today. I know that it wasn't really about trust, even though I said the word trust two or three times. Uh, I hope still that it did add some value to you. It maybe made you think a little differently about this whole question of make versus buy. May trust be with you. This was The Trust Show. What would you like to know about trust and trustworthiness? Let me know and I'll answer it in a future episode. I would love to hear from you. Email me at yoram at thetrustshow.com. If you like this episode, subscribe to the show so you will automatically get notified when I release a new episode. Rate it. Write a review for this podcast because those ratings help not only you, but also others looking for podcasts just like this. If you're looking for more resources to learn about how to build trust, be trusted, or know who to trust, look up my workshops, online courses, books, or go to my website, trusthabits.com. And remember that the answer to these two questions will have the biggest impact on your personal and professional success or failure. Can I trust you? 
and can you trust me? Thank you for listening or watching The Trust Show.